Okay, what we're doing is we've unplugged the four pin connector on the back of the intake and we are on the injector harness side of the connector. And what you'd have on this connector is you'd have, you'd have a power here, a power here, and your two control wires. So what we want to do is measure between a power and a control and a power and a control, which is going to measure a group of three injectors. The, each injector is 12.6 ohms a piece as a spec. And what you should have with three injectors in parallel to each other is you divide that number by three. So you should have roughly uh, four to five ohms of resistance per bank of three injectors. And go ahead and do the outer two first. So we're gonna go, polarity doesn't matter with our ohm meter. Go to the outer two pins. Okay, with our spec being four to five ohms, you can see that our good bank of three is showing low resistance. We have 3.6 ohms. But, you know, I'll tell you what, that's a crappy test if you think about it. I mean, we only have like 0.4 or 0.5 of an ohm to tell me whether or not I gotta pull the freaking intake off of this. Yeah, I don't like that, but you can see it, it's there. We got low resistance even on our good bank, the one that's firing all three. Uh, let's go ahead and go on the other bank of three injectors now. And that's the middle two wires, ohmmeter to the middle two. Okay, and here's our other, other bank of three, the one that has the sorted injector, and you see we're reading 1.0, 1 1.1 ohms of resistance. That's our sorted one. That's the one that's drawn so much amperage. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reach down real quick and unplug it, and uh, we'll see what that number jumps up to. Okay, I got the one injector unplugged up front, and so what we're gonna be looking at on the, on the screen is two injectors that are in parallel to each other because we unplugged the one. This is the bank that was reading 1.2, 1.1 ohms before. We're now reading 6.4, and that would be a good bank of two injectors that read 12.6 ohms a piece, right? With two injectors reading 12.6, parallel circuit law is you take the number of resistors of equal value and you divide them. There's two of them. You divide them by the number uh, of resistance, which is 12.6, so it's 12.6 divided by two, and that gives you what your total circuit resistance would be. 12.6 divided by two is 6.3 ohms of resistance. And as you can see, we have exactly that number with these two injectors. So the two up front are good uh, and a little bit of parallel circuit uh, laws for you too. Uh, but clearly we had a shorted injector up front and the other two are good. And that's exactly what our amp probe waveform showed us was a good bank of two. Man, I definitely prefer the amp probe. But this is the way you do it with, the, with an ohmmeter. All right, I just wanted to do a real quick circuit design so you guys understand what we were doing with this car. And the first thing is I just drew a generic picture of, of what this thing's designed like. And as you can see, there are two control wires right here, the blue and the green. These are my two computer control wires. But what's unique about the GM design, even though it looks like, if you didn't know the inside, that it looks like a bank controlled system, because there's two controls internal to the computer, there's only one driver. So the whole system works together. And that explains why our one sorted injector, which was actually this one right here, would affect the entire system, even though there's two different drive or two different control wires, one driver, that injector is overloading this driver and preventing all these other injectors from firing. Even when we put the Noid light in, which was over here, we installed a Noid light on this injector, it wouldn't even flash the Noid light. That's how much the other circuits involved in this parallel group were not functioning, and that's from one shorted injector. So two control wires one driver inside the computer, typical GM design. This is the connector that we were dealing with right here. Uh, the intake manifold basically covers this whole assembly. You can get to this one and you can get to this one. And uh, this is where we were doing our tests. We had an amp probe here and we had an amp probe here. And when we looked at the one bank, we had 14 amps of current. And we looked at the other bank and we had zero. And that's where we were at. A little bit further into this, when we did the resistance test, what we did is we separated this connector, unplugged it, and then we installed our ohm meter like this. And knowing that there's two feed wires, you had to pick the right one, the feed wire for the blue bank, the feed wire for the green bank was different. You see how we connected our ohm meter. Uh, polarity doesn't matter with the ohm meter. 
Uh, you just get a reading. So I put them up there, but it's not necessary to go like this. You could have switched it and got the same readings. So that was the one bank of three. As you can see, you're reading. The ohmmeter is actually going to send out a small voltage current through each of these three injectors, and the return is going to come back through this way. So that would be a bank of three. Same thing on the other side, that the ohmmeter is going to send out a small voltage and current and look for the return. And that's three injectors that are in parallel to each other. Now there's something with parallel laws that you need to remember that when you have resistance that you add in parallel, you will drop total circuit resistance. And so I have some of these numbers down here. Resistance spec for each injector is 12.6. When you have a group of three, it would be 4.3, or if you had a group of six, it would be 2.3, and that would be met if you were measuring the whole group. And so I'm showing a little illustration of that right here, that what you're looking at is, we're looking at a group of three that would be reading 4.3 ohms apiece. That would be a group of 12.6 ohm injectors. And that's what we should have seen on both banks. And what we saw on the one bank was 3.8 ohms. So clearly that's a little bit low. And what we saw on the other bank was between 1 and 1 1.2 ohms a piece. To uh, plug in the um, amperage numbers that we saw, keep in mind when it was a no start, that we had 14 amps on this one bank and we had actually, when we initially looked at it, this other bank was a flat line, zero amps. And that was because, again, the driver was being overloaded, the one bank not working at all. When we unplugged that one injector, what we saw was this one changed, that was 14 amps, this one changed to around 1.7 amps, and this one was actually functioning now at about 2.5 amps. So we knew we had one sorted injector here, we identified it. Over here, we had the beginnings of a sort as indicated by this line, and that this amperage was a little bit high. If each injector is drawing 0.7 a piece, like we mentioned, this one should be about 2.1 amps, not 2.5. Pretty uh, small number change can be a, be a big deal, but uh, that's what that bank looked like with the uh, shorted injector unplugged. Let's go down a little bit further on some math here to make this a little bit clearer, hopefully, is you take a group of three, so, so this one was reading again 1.2 or one this one was reading 1 to 1 1.2 ohms on the shorted bank and the way that you could justify that would be two injectors at 12.6 which we knew we had because we unplugged the one shorted one and that's what we read when we measured it was about 6.3 ohms of resistance if you do the math with those two you can, you can actually simplify them and make one 6.3 ohm resistor out of it. Put that in parallel with this other injector at 1.5. Do your math. Comes out to this. 6.3 times 1.5 over or divided by 6.3 plus 1.5. These are some parallel formulas you can use. It's R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. R being the resistor. Then you come up with 9.45 over 7.8 which would be divided and you have 1.2. That's total circuit resistance for this one bank with the shorted injector. Again, I'm just emphasizing uh, how to do it, number one. And number two, that the ohmmeter is uh, pretty difficult to understand sometimes when you have injectors in parallel. And I just wanted to try to clarify that a little bit. So that's what we did on this car. Uh, clearly, uh, the scope was the best method. You know, we put, a, we put an amp probe on here, get a reading, right? Put an amp probe on here, get a reading. That was key. Injector current ramp testing. Shorted Multec Injector GM.